Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share a workflow for getting your parameters into iProperties. A common challenge that users face is they have to put some sort of value into their description that is the overall size of plate or a piece of paneling or, or whatever. So uh, the normal approach to resolving that is just to manually enter that, but that's error prone because you might change the size of the plant panel or plate and then forget to change the description. So what we can do to overcome this is we can actually link those parameters to our description. So let me show you how that's done. So what I have here is a piece of paneling that would be like an interior wall panel at my last job. Uh, I, I used to work for an RV manufacturer. So I already have the, the part done. It's basically a rectangle that's extruded to a specific thickness and a couple cutouts. If you look at my parameters, I've already named the length and the width to be meaningful names. I find this helpful because it makes it easier to put together the formula for the description once we're at the last step. This D2 here is actually the thickness of the panel. So I'll change its name to THK. Just a matter of clicking in there and changing the name. I'm also going to export these parameters. The reason I export this is that exporting basically does two things. One is it allows the value to be exported and pushed into a derived component if I'm doing a derived operation. That's not what I'm doing. The other thing that it does is it takes the value here and pushes it into a custom property named the same thing as the parameter. Now you also see here I've got these things in decimal, I've got some in fractional, some in decimal. I can also format those to match my specific company standards. So if I right click on this 48 inches right here, I can say custom property format. You can see I can tell if it's going to be a text or a number. I'll leave it as text. I'll leave the units as inches. I'll change this to fractional because that's actually the standard I used at my last company. I can use the unit string here or show the unit string, which is going to basically put the little inch mark there. And then I can also set my precision. Since one of the values was down to a 32nd, the 5 30 seconds um, of an inch panel, I'm going to change my precision to 32nd and also hit this apply to existing comparable parameters. The reason I do that is that it will then format all the other parameters that I have exported to match these settings. That way I don't have to do them individually. It will save me a lot of time. Say OK. And so you don't really see anything here, but if I say done and go into my custom I properties, you'll see that now I've got length at 48, THK at 5.30 seconds, and width is 22 and 3 quarters. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the Project tab and put into my description some sort of formula that will pull those values in a way that I think is appropriate for what I need. So I'm going to click in this cell. How I kind of start the formula is put an equal. That's very similar to how you would do it in Excel if you think about it. You always put an equal sign at the very beginning of a, uh, of a cell that's going to have a formula in, in Excel. So I'm going to put that equal sign there and then I'm going to pull in the THK parameter. And notice I'm going to enclose it in the left and right caret, which are basically on the comma and the period uh, keys on my keyboard. I'll say THK panel comma and I'll do width by length. And I can you see I can mix regular text with parameters I'm pulling. Uh, if I hit enter here, you'll see that it'll you know kind of accept that formula, start pulling the values. If for some reason one of your values doesn't get pulled in, it's probably because of a of a case sensitivity or misspelling in one of the parameter names. As soon as it sees that carrots, it tries to pull in that name and it's case sensitive and spelling. So you gotta be pretty careful. If you realize you misspelled length or something like that, you can always hit this FX symbol. It will show you the, the formula that you 
keyed in and then you can make adjustments to it. That happens to me every now and then as I misspell one or I capitalize it in one place but don't capitalize it in the other and it turns into an issue for me. But I click on that again, it accepts the value and now my description is showing the appended or uh, formulated uh, value based off of me pulling in those custom I properties. And one other note real quick here, that formula thing I just did, that works for any standard or custom I property. Uh, and there's actually a few other properties that you don't really see that it, it, it works with, but those carrots uh, around any name uh, of a property should pull those values in. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for taking time to check out the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. And as always, thanks for watching.